Hello everyone, Tim Brown. Welcome back to Mabel Podcast. For this episode, I want to focus on iCloud Drive. iCloud Drive was first introduced during WWDC this past summer and officially was released when Yosemite came out in the fall. And it was important for Yosemite's release because Yosemite was going to be key to syncing your files across devices. Well, it's now March 2015, and where are we with iCloud Drive? I'm going to focus on the positives and then some of the negatives, that is, in terms of things that still need to be done in order to iCloud Drive to be fully effective. Okay, what works well? Well, right now you're looking at iCloud Drive on my desktop. You're not going to find iCloud Drive on your iOS devices because there isn't an app for it. Instead, you can only access files on iCloud Drive through other apps. So let's focus on the desktop first. When you open up a Finder window, you will see in the left-hand side, under Favorites, in the sidebar, iCloud Drive. When you select it, you'll see all the folders that are associated with the apps that you have on your computer and on your iOS devices. What you're going to notice is that there are only a few folders that actually have custom customized folders set up for those apps. For example, there are the default apps for Apple, of course, Keynote, Numbers, Pages, iMovie, Automator, Preview, and applications like that, QuickTime. And then you'll see a handful of applications made for the Mac and iOS that also have their own customized folders like Documents by Readle, uh, have your Pocket Briefcase, which I use for storing files sometimes but not very often, Pixelmator by far the best one, um, Prismo is a document scanner, I love it. So you kind of get the idea, but that's it. And that's pretty scary because I have a billion apps. Okay, maybe not that many, but I have a lot of apps. But it's, I find it fascinating that none of those apps have corresponding folders for storing their files. And we're going to get to that in a moment. But let's just focus on the files that I do have that I can rely on with, without a doubt. So here are my files, or my folders rather. If I open Pixelmator, for example, you'll see all of my projects created with Pixelmator, which I can access from my desktop version as well as from my iOS devices. For example, when I open up Pixelmator, you'll see that in the left-hand side in the Finder window, right on the iCloud, Pixelmator features all of my apps that are available in the cloud. And all these apps, again, correspond with the apps that are available in the Pixelmator folder that, that are available online as well as in a Finder window here locally on my desktop. All the files that you see here and all the files that you see in Safari when logged into iCloud are the same files that are here. So let me open up Pixelmator for the iPad. With Pixelmator open, I'm going to go ahead and select the plus symbol and I'm going to now access iCloud Drive. And selecting the Pixelmator folder, you can see that now all the same files that I just showed you that were in the Finder window on my desktop, as well as in the Safari iCloud browser, are the same files available here. And this is the way iCloud Drive is supposed to work ideally. Every app should work just like this. But unfortunately, Pixelmator and a handful of other apps are far ahead of the game as far as where the developer community happens to be right now. So the question is, how can I have so many apps and yet have so few who are using iCloud Drive the way, say, Pixelmator is using it? Well, maybe there's an explanation for that. I'm going to go ahead and now show you my iPhone. And I'm going to go into settings and I'm going to go to iCloud Drive. And you're going to see here all the applications that I'm using that are using iCloud Drive for various different purposes. Some history. You remember when iCloud first came out? It was mainly used as a way to back up data, to back up information, a way to save your information. Well, when iCloud became iCloud Drive, it did the same thing. It just simply added other features such as the ability to save files to iCloud Drive that you can then access from other apps and from other devices and computers. Well, yes, obviously it's doing that. Pixelmator most certainly is taking advantage of it. 
So is Prismo and a lot of other applications. But a lot of applications are not. They're just using it for data backup, metadata, and so forth. And I would say that 75% of the applications that you see here are using iCloud drives the same way they used it when it was just iCloud for metadata backup. That's it. There are some exceptions, though. For example, let's take Puppet or Shadow Puppet. Shadow Puppet does allow you to create projects on your iPhone and then save them to iCloud Drive. So, for example, I'm going to pull up one right here. And I'm now going to go ahead and share this project. And I get a little menu here, as you can see. And one is the famous iCloud symbol. So I can select that iCloud symbol. And it gives me the familiar menu that you get when you want to save a file to iCloud. The only thing that's different from what you see on my iPhone and what you noticed in my Finder window and on iCloud and Safari is that there isn't a customized folder for Shadow Puppet. Uh, why is that? How come Pixelmator has one? How come Pocket Briefcase has one, but Shadow Puppet doesn't have one? Well, I mean, I think that's pretty simple. That's the developer's fault. Uh, the developer maybe set it up to have iCloud Drive integration, but didn't think it all the way through so that there would be a corresponding folder for users to save their files. So basically, it's left up to you to save or, or create your own folder. That is until the developers catch up and decide to create one for themselves. The only conclusion that I can come to here is that the developers simply did not create a folder when they developed the app. There are only some developers who are doing that. So instead, I went through and created my own folder. And I just called it Shadow Puppet. So I'm going to select that folder, click Done. And I can now save my project to my iCloud Drive. Now, one thing that's really nice about iCloud Drive is that you can create your own folders, as many folders as you want, that you can access any time from iCloud Drive. And in this case, because Shadow Puppet does not have a default folder at the moment, I'll create my own. What the heck? So I created one, Shadow Puppet. But I want it to kind of look like all the other folders. Now, when you open Shadow Puppet, for example, here's the file that I just saved from my iPhone. And it's the same file that you can also see when logged in to Safari. When creating your own folder, however, the icon that you add to it will only be available on the Mac. It will not be reflected in iCloud and Safari or on your iOS device. So that's the only limitation. But still, if you want to do it, that's a quick and easy way that you can. And basically entails just downloading a third-party application that you can get from the App Store. In this case, I'm going to use Folder Factory. And Folder Factory makes this whole process very easy. So I'm going to click Create New. And I'm going to actually use an existing folder, which is that Shadow Puppet folder that I just set up. So I'm going to go to iCloud Drive. I'm going to locate Sh Shadow Puppet. Open. I'm now going to add the icon from the Shadow Puppet app that I got from online. I'm just going to drag it on top of this image. Just give me a second here. I'll just download this from the web. I'm just going to drag that right on top of that folder. And I'm going to resize it. And I'm going to go to File and then Set Icon for Existing Folder. OK, I'm going to exit out of that. And now you'll see in my Finder window that Shadow Puppet icon has been added to the folder. Now, in giving credit to Apple, iCloud Drive is an excellent service, especially when you consider how well iCloud Drive works with Apple's native apps. For example, the iWork suite works perfectly. In the Finder window, when you access the Keynote folder, you can access all of your Keynote presentations. When you go online and access Keynote, same thing. All of your presentations can be accessed in the cloud. And you can work on these presentations while you're in a Safari browser, while you're on your desktop, 
or even in your iOS device. For example, here's a screenshot of Keynote on my iPhone and I can open these applications up, I can edit them, save them back, and everything will be updated across all devices and all platforms. Now I would like to stress once again that even when it comes to Apple's native apps, the way that iCloud Drive is being used really does vary, vary. It depends on the application that you're using. For example, if you go to iMovie, iMovie you can create projects. These projects, however, cannot be shared in the cloud. I just can't open up my iPhone or iPad, access the original projects, and then go in and then finish editing those projects. The only thing that can actually be shared across devices and across platforms are the actual finished product, the exported file itself. Those files can be shared into iCloud Drive, into a folder that is called iMovie and then opened up in other apps. For example, if I was to take this project here and click Share and click File and then click Next, I would then select iMovie, which is right under iCloud in the Finder window here, and just click Save and select it to iMovie in iCloud. And that file will be saved there and, and only then can I access it from the other devices. So if I go back to my folders and I look for that iMovie folder, you'll see all of the finished products, that is the exported files, are there in my Finder window as well as in Safari when I log into iCloud. Likewise, if I open iMovie on my iPhone or my iPad, after starting a new project, if I go to Import Files from iCloud Drive with Video selected and selecting the iMovie folder, you will see that you will have access to those same files that are in your finder window on your desktop and or in iCloud Drive in Safari. Now I have to admit things can get very complicated at times when trying to understand how iCloud Drive actually works particularly when you're trying to get a full comprehensive understanding of how it benefits all applications regardless of whether they're created by Apple or by third-party developers. For example, you're looking at GarageBand on my iPhone right now. And I created a little recording, just for demo purposes, and I saved it to iCloud. Actually, now it's backing up to iCloud as we speak. Now, if you go back to the desktop here and I scroll through my iCloud Drive folder that's on my desktop, you'll notice that there, there isn't a GarageBand folder at all. And if I go to Safari, as well, if I scroll through all my folders, still there isn't a corresponding folder that indicates that there are some GarageBand files that I can access. When I go to GarageBand itself, that is GarageBand for the desktop, I can access that file that way. Why? Because you think about it, GarageBand is rather limited. I mean, what other application is going to open a GarageBand project file anyway, right? It's not going to happen. So why even bother having a folder? Instead, you access files in the cloud by going to file and then going to iCloud and then selecting the option import GarageBand for iOS song. And there you can see that the project that I set up on my iPhone that I titled intro is now available on the desktop as an option. So in conclusion, iCloud Drive offers a great service in terms of integrating content across devices. The one problem I think that people are still having right now is that there's a lack of consistency. Some apps work fantastic, some do not. And this includes Apple's own applications as in the case of Keynote and Pages on the one hand and iMovie and GarageBand on the other, as well as how third-party applications are integrating it as well while some like Pixelmator take full advantage of it and others who are primarily using it for metadata backup. In either way, iCloud Drive has greatly improved how we use our Macs and our iOS devices and I think that we can look forward to some great improvements and possibilities in the future. I hope this episode was helpful though in terms of understanding how iCloud Drive works. This is Tim Brown. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. Check me out next time.